Please introduce yourself, including your pronouns and what you want the audience to know about you. Okay, sure. Um, I'm Zandy. Uh, I go by Zandy because it's a nickname I had as a, as a kid, so I prefer that as my name. And um, basically, uh, I'm a VR artist and world builder and designer, and I started back in May 2019. When I, I first, uh, I, was, I was using VR in 2018, and uh, I loved it. I just felt so, it, it was just a fit, you know, and something just clicked. And then I saw Goro Fujita doing stuff with, with Quill, and I was like, oh, yeah. whoa, that's really cool. So I was a mad girl, and, and uh, so I had to get a PC. So I got a PC, and then I didn't end up going into Quill because for some reason unlit shaders for me they just mm -hmm. don't work because i like to see the reflection of the light on objects and with unlit shaders you don't have that so um i saw some artists using tilt brush and i was totally amped it's like a moth to a flame there's no stopping you mm -hmm. at that point and i've been going ever since so um yeah so in 2019 may 2019 was the first time i picked up a virtual a uh, paintbrush, and I was inspired by several artists, and this is where I am now. So, one of the artists in particular, awesome. Sabby Life, she was the one that did um, she did dailies for a year, and uh, she did an amazing job. And I was inspired as well as other people. So, a whole bunch of us started to do painting mm -hmm. on a more frequent basis, and it's almost you know it's like yoga. You know, you go in it and, and you just, you know, sometimes you'll be in for half an hour, sometimes you'll be in for several hours, depending on what you're working on. But when you become immersed in the process and not worry, I mean, you, sh you shut off everything. It's great because mm -hmm. you shut off all of your surroundings too, you know, being in VR and, and you just focus on, on the now, what you're doing now, and you just kind of release yourself and all the emotion and so forth goes into the painting you know so i started in uh, january 2020 i started doing daily painting so i do one painting a day and um i've been doing that for four years now so this is my fourth year and i only took i took two and a half weeks off only because social media i'm not a fan of social media <laughs> personally and um I post to keep myself accountable. So it's kind of like, you know, if, if you had to go to the gym, for example, right. you know, you go to the gym, you have a workout partner, they're going to hold you accountable. Right. So it's, it's kind of the same thing. If I don't post, I'm not going to hold myself accountable right. to do it daily. So it has nothing to do with competition. This is my own personal journey. And so to make myself accountable, I, I, published daily next year i'm only going to be doing it probably once or twice a week but i'll okay. still be doing my dailies at home um because social media after a while it gets to be too much um so i will be backing off on social media but i'm not going to be backing off on on painting mm -hmm. so the whole process again for me it's it's releasing emotions you know some days depending on what's going on in the day i may have one that shows my anger you know in other days it may show that you know i'm a jokester so it may show something funny or it may show something that's um very emotional you know and so each day that i paint whatever i'm feeling on that day is what i paint when there are things like themes it makes it easier so i encourage anyone who's who sees like inktober or sculptober and they're into art and they want to try vr art is to try and get involved in those and, and try it for 30 days and see how you feel because the themes actually when it, when the themes come it's a relief for me because i don't have to think about what to paint because i follow the theme daily so um it's very helpful for people who want to try and get involved in that and to try it out and see if it's for them yeah. but what's cool is everything that you create you can use it um to build worlds you can use it to build product um and and, and patterns and digital assets that you can sell or you can um, just do it for fun. Okay. So I highly encourage everybody to try. Can you explain what dailies are and why you do them? 
it's emotion it's an emotion 100% emotional for me so um when i do dailies i paint a different thing each day sometimes i know what i want to paint sometimes i don't sometimes i you know the first 15 minutes i go in i'm just moving my brush strokes around just just kind of getting a feel of what i'm going to do and then it clicks so sometimes i use um reference photos and sometimes i don't but again it's it's all based on interpretation of life experiences so it's pretty intimate when you think about it because mm -hmm. if you think of any artist that puts their heart and soul into something you feel the art when you look at it or when you're listening to music when they put their heart and soul into the music you feel the music that's that's the whole thing so for me my daily practice is like this is my yoga so i i spend on average about an hour doing stuff sometimes i want to stay in longer I, and that's the other thing too that that it's one of the things that in the art world that i i am not a fan of is when people say try and do as much as you can in a short amount of time no you need to all those emotions you need to feel those emotions as they come out if it takes you five hours it takes you five hours over time the more you do the better you gonna get because you're doing it every day you know i see a change in in my art since when i started to now and it has to do with practice so when i get in i throw the music on loud i mean you don't see <laughs> you don't see when I, it's probably a good thing people aren't seeing what i'm doing while i paint because i've got the music blaring mm -hmm. and and then all of a sudden some tunes on it, like if it's a rock tune, all of a sudden I'm like, like this inside while I'm peeing in between. So, <laughs> you know, singing along to it, whatever the case may be. But it's, it's, um, it's all for me, it's, it's emotion. So everything I paint has to do with what I'm feeling. So um, my goal as an artist is when I do these dailies, I want people to look at it, but not just look at it. I want you to feel that's the ultimate goal. So when you look at different things, which ones are you drawn to and look at the piece and maybe you see something in there that is actually reflecting on you as well, which is what art is all about, right? So art without any heart is an art to me. Mm. <laughs> you know, it has to, it has to come from here um, because it's, it's very intimate. So any artist that you see, like, and even any world builder, if you think about it, they're building a world based on what's in here and here. So what they envision, it could be something as, you know, when you were a kid, you always wanted to go to a certain place. So whoever creates the world, they want, it's part of them. It's, it's very intimate. Um, and I don't think people realize that. So because it's, you're looking into the psyche of the person that's creating the world you know, just by being in it. And then it invokes emotion. So whether you're going to a rave, or you're going to um, an art world, or you're going to play some games, all of those are, the whole point is it's, it's, it's bringing out emotions in you and feelings. So you can feel amped, you can feel bored, you can feel, you know, inspired, you know, depending on what world you go into and what relates to you. So I think that's a that's a true connection. It's a real intimate connection when you go into these VR worlds because, again, it's not just somebody making the world. You're looking inside of that person's soul, basically, of what they what they're feeling and what they want to other people to experience, which is pretty wild. And people only are being exposed to you from what's in here because they don't see your persona. They don't see you as you would in the real world. So there's, you, I find there's less prejudice, there's less other stuff going on because you're seeing the person for who they are. What inspires you to share your dailies and how do you decide what to show or combine into certain worlds? It's usually based on a theme. And a lot of my worlds have a healing aspect to it, whether you realize it or not. Even if you think of the Halloween world, some people may think that sitting around with the candles is a, or around the fire is is a place of comfort right so um like fire and ice is is a real pop popular world that i published and in there i have the healing caves i have the opal caves which is the type of type of atmosphere um magical forest is the same sort of thing so it's it's um there's always a calming 
whether it's the music, even psychedelic trance, <laughs> um, it's got some it's got some calming aspects to it. And the reason being is because I want people to feel safe, and I want them to deal with their emotions in a way that is a positive way and have fun and and enjoy themselves at the same time. When I come up with the worlds, I usually have a theme. Um, it usually happens when I have enough pieces that I think would go together well. Sometimes they're individual pieces. And I also have some that I've recently pulled um, from VR chat, but I can always upload them again. But they are pieces that are close to my heart. I did a historical masterpiece series. Certain things were going on at certain times when I was painting them, like the Sagrada Familia, um, I did the entire interior. Every single piece of stained glass is different in the entire cathedral. And that took me 23 days, but it was one of those times where you have a lot of stuff going on and you need to release that. So I painted for like probably eight, 10 hours straight for 23 days. And I broke it up like I had a break in between, but it's the entire interior. So the interior of La Sagrada Familia, it's not, <laughs> it's not just a piece of it. It's the entire thing. But those were times where um, I needed to get into that mode and release those feelings. And so I poured it into the art. I will share, I'll probably have a maybe one or two worlds next year. I'm going to be backing off because I've got other projects that I'm going to be working on. Given your daily creative process, how do you pace yourself to avoid burnout? I, I can still do art every day, no problem. The social media bit I get burnt out on. And the reason being is because there's lots of outside noise, lots of negativity. So I think with to avoid burnout, if anyone's interested in doing a daily, is to uh, focus on your why, why you're, you're doing it. There will always be somebody better than you. Um, and you can't compare yourself to others because it's a process. So even if you think of when I started to now, it's... I've evolved over time. I can do things a lot faster than I did when I first started. But again, my reasons for painting are different from other people, people's reasons for painting. I think if you are just painting to get the end result and to make money off of it, that's fine and dandy, but you're going to burn out because you're looking at it from the wrong perspective. You always want to make sure that you are focusing on why you're doing what you're doing, drown out the outside noises, and, and unfortunately, um, the more you do, the more static you get, believe it or not. And I think it's because people aren't doing as much and they're comparing themselves with what I'm doing, but my journey is completely different from their journey. Mine is very personal. Do you know what I mean? So everybody's got their own personal journey and it's really important to, to focus on that and focus on your own journey and drown out all that outside noise that happens and if somebody's taking away your vibe you need to separate yourself from that person it's it's you've got to do things that make you happy and 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 continue with what is true to you how do you optimize your worlds or choose which ones to leave as pc only like this world for example yeah this one this one is shaders so this particular world was for both pc and quest same world I just published it for Quest and I published it for PC. The problem is with the PC world, some of these shaders would would mess things up and and I had poor performance for Quest um, users. And if you think about it, if you look at all of these are individual brush strokes, okay? Including on top, so even the soft highlighter, highlighter brush, all of that, those are all individual brush strokes. If you look at the tree over there, those are all individual brush strokes. Mm. So even though I join, it's pulling performance on Quest users. So when I choose a Quest world, like a magical forest or fire and ice, they're very simple worlds with not crazy shaders. How would you describe your style of art and what would you like visitors of your world to take away from each experience? I try and keep it um, true to my own style because there are very few times that I'll actually do, um, you know, replicas of different things that have already been made. 
or fan art or anything like that. I try and keep it unique. Uh, one of the things that I'm known for is the architectural builds and the animals that I do, as well as the trippy videos that I do as well. So those uh, tend to be the most popular out of all of them. Uh, again, it depends on what I'm feeling at the moment and what I'm doing as to what comes out on that day. So I think, I think that's unique in the way um, that I do those. Um, and, and I think that's good because every artist needs to keep to their unique style. And for the worlds, I, I just want people to be able to, um, my ultimate goal is to not only share my art, but to invic, you know, encourage emotion um, when they're in it. So I would, that's the ultimate goal. I want them to be able to kind of um, interpret the world as to what they think. Maybe I was thinking while I was putting the piece together and have their own interpretation of it and have some emotion from when they leave the world. Do you have any worlds in all space VR as well? Um, I'd go into alt space, but I didn't have any worlds in alt space. The reason being is because um, the tilt brush and open brush shaders are very unique. And the fact that sometimes some platforms, the, the shaders won't, um, won't work. Even though you have the the toolkit to go with it, or it's not compatible, so or it's because of the high poly uh, aspect of the art pieces as well. So I mean, anything you do in open brush and tilt brush is going to be a high poly piece. There's no way around it, because <laughs> um, again, it's it's every brush stroke. It's not creating a low poly model in Blender and subdividing it and so forth. This is every single piece. Every brush stroke is is gonna increase your poly count like crazy. What advice do you have for new world builders? Don't copy somebody else and try and because a world is popular, try and still make it something that is it, that represents you, not somebody else. Because I think what happens with world builders too, and not just world builders, but it happens in the art world and so forth, is, is you know, prime example were, were the apes, right? So, like, they came out and then everybody's doing apes. Oh, yeah. Instead of staying true to your own, like, you should be the trendsetter. Try and stay true to your own style and your own interests and create something that you think that not, not only would you like, but other people would like to. I think it's really important to stay true and authentic as to who you are and show that in your worlds or your art or whatever you decide to do. What parts of the 3D creative process could be better in your opinion? It would be, it would be the ideal world if all of these programs work together, like seamlessly. So, you know, you know, you have, you have certain things like, you know, geometry nodes are awesome. Like, people create some really cool stuff with that. And you can't bring it into Unity and make it work the same way, right? So, mm -hmm. is even the flow of things, like, people don't realize that when you get technical into the world building, it's not just bringing your assets in, it's decimating your assets. And sometimes that requires me to go into to Blender. It's sometimes... Um, I have to join like brush strokes. I have to go into Blender to do that. You know, so it, I can't do it all in one program. That's the biggest hurdle, I think. In an ideal world, they would seamlessly flow, no problem. You know, same thing with the shaders, right? So uh -huh. certain shaders are going to work in certain types of of platforms, and it's not going to work in other platforms. It would be great if they all merged mm -hmm. together <laughs> you know so so you don't have to use a crazy number of programs to get the same result mm -hmm. you know I, I think that's the biggest frustration and and time waster really when it yeah. comes to building worlds can you explain your software workflow in more detail and how you bring your worlds into vr Basically, when I'm making the worlds, I have to do a couple things to them. I have to use Blender. I have to use uh, Tilt Brush or Gravity Sketch or Open Brush or whatever. So you have your assets. You have to think of your theme and then build it around and, and 
try and envision what you would dream it to be like and then bring it together. So the reason why I have to use different programs for the world building is, again, I can't do it in tilt brush alone. I can't do it in open brush alone. I have to combine the like brush strokes. I have to um, decimate where I can. You know, I, if, if it's a painted world, if I decimate it too much, I end up with holes. It's not the same as building a low poly model in Blender and decimating it or subdividing something, decimating it. It's not the same. The big thing with tilt brush and uh, open brush is that the draw calls are like, they're crazy because each piece, like if you think of each daily I've done. So even if you look at these, like the banana trees, that was a daily. The couches, that was a daily. Um, the birds of paradise that was a daily so each of those brush strokes well each of those pieces have to be combined or else mm. my draw calls go nuts so that's a huge huge challenge to vr artists and um vr art is is very different than working in blender you have more precision and control with blender and maya and all of those other programs because of the nature of those programs but when you um, when you are painting in three dimensional space and you bring in those assets, you come and you have different challenges to try and uh, increase the performance. If you had a choice, would you rather use all these programs in VR? Yeah, and and the reason being is because um I can't like if I, I used to draw a little bit here and there, two uh -huh. D drawing, procreate programs okay i would rather paint in three-dimensional space for me it seems more organic you know because it's like it's like if you think about it, you're going to plant a plant you're touching the plant you're moving the plant you know you're interacting with the plant it's the same thing you're you're you have there's no limit to your canvas but working in three-dimensional space for me seems so much more natural than doing it in 2, 2D. But that's just me. You know what I mean? Like, it, I think if you're using 2D programs, the precision is by far better than it is in 3D. However, that's changing now. We're starting to see certain things being developed now since all of these art programs have come about. Mm -hmm. um, you can do a lot more with it now. And you and there is more precision than when I first started. Like the Trevi, for example, I did that all by up. The snap, there was no snap. You know, the the first brush stroke was a snap. That was it. You you can't do anything else. Uh -huh. So I was using all reference photos to create that, and and there's no there was no precision. So that's the downside. Or or to have say you wanted to have make an asset that if you were to print it out, it'd be five by ten feet. You can't. You can do that now, but you couldn't do it then because there was no tool that would help you measure right. real world measures inside of 3D space. But all that's changing now. Blender now has um, Freebird, which is a VR plugin where you can do stuff in VR now. My biggest fear is that certain companies just limit people to Maya. You know, Blender, this and that, instead of embracing three-dimensional programs that you can use in VR, because I think you get a different style, you get a different feel for it. It's just, it's just different. It doesn't mean that it's one's better than the other, but why not embrace it? Right. Since we're embracing VR and AR and all that other stuff, why not embrace all this other stuff a little bit better? You know. How do you determine or reach a point where you're satisfied with what you've created? I'm never satisfied with what I've created. Um, I'm always trying to improve. Uh, it's a bit of an OCD thing, to be honest with you. I got to learn to, that's one of my downfalls. I got to learn when I need to stop and just be happy with it. Um, a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to certain things. Do you have any new worlds that you're building right now that you can tell us about? When will they be ready? At this point, um, I'm not going to be doing world building for a while um, because I've got some other things that 
I'm going to be working on. How can we stay updated on what you're creating? Oh, yeah, they can go to um, most of my posts, actually. The Instagram's my my favorite account, anyway. Uh -huh. So Instagram, I'll post things there. I'm also on Twitter. Uh -huh. Um X and um, so they can find out there. My my store is the Unique VR Art Boutique, or you can look up just Zandy XR and you'll see it. Mm -hmm. And that's where I have uh, two clothing lines. One's called the Artisan Collection, and one is the Casual Collection. The Artisan Collection is uh, very raw VR patterns that I've taken mm -hmm. from my artwork. So I don't alter those at all. And it's only certain select pieces that I use for that. That collection, I work with a distributor um, out of London, and they hand sew everything. Wow. So you can choose uh, the material you want. You can choose the hardware for pocket pocketbooks, for example, or um, raincoats or anything like that, shirts. You can choose the, the um, type of fabric you want. And they put my designs on them, and it's made to order. So that's very special. Thinking back to creating in Blender versus OpenBrush, how do the meshes and textures work in both programs, and how do you make them work in VR? It's built into the brush, so depending on which one it is, if I were to take this into Blender, you would see... I would still have faces and vertices and, and so forth, but it's built into... The, sh the shader is built into the brush. And when it's exported as a GLB, all that information is there. Okay. So, all right. So there's a couple of things that I can do. Um, Mesh Baker is a good one too for combining, and um, that's a good one. Uh, but you gotta be careful again, because with these, because of how the, how they're made, you gotta be careful with decimation, because the decimation on these. It's a mess. It will it will make it look so bad um, if you go past a certain point. So combining brush strokes is the best method in optimization for VR chat worlds or any worlds that have to do with painted painted um, pieces. As our interview comes to a close, what words do you want to leave the audience with? You know, don't give up. And, you know, try not to, you know, focus on everybody else and what they're doing. Stay true to your own art style. Stay true to yourself. Um, and everything will work out. And you won't burn out. And you'll enjoy what you're doing. And enjoy the process. Don't, don't rush it. Even the world building. Enjoy what you're doing. You can always come back and redo it. Or um, I've redone worlds over and over. Um, you can always come back and redo it, and as your skills improve, you can make new worlds. So just focus on your passion and, and go for it. That's the best advice I can, I can give you.